24K Golden, I mean, you have the biggest song in America right now. Biggest song. Who was the person that gave you the news that you have your first number one song on Billboard? Um, so the head of my label, Barry Weiss, he called me at like 8.46 in the morning. And he <laughs> knows I don't wake up until 10. So he <laughs> called me at 8.46. So I'm like, this is either going to be really good news or right. really bad news. So let me see which one it is. And I pick up like half asleep and he's like, you can't post this yet, but you got the number one. And I'm like, oh, I had, I did not know that was coming. Like, <laughs> I, I really had no idea that, that, that it was going to happen that fast. I thought it right. would be another week or something like that. But I go back to sleep and I, I wake up again, like an hour and a half later. And I see the text or, or the tweet from billboard. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations on your first number one. And I'm like, oh, that wasn't a dream. That was real <laughs> life. And I run around the house. I wake up Omer and KBZ, who produced a song. Right. We, I jump in the pool. I'm just running <laughs> around yelling, going crazy because it's, it's incredible. I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment. You're only 19 years old. How did you actually celebrate? I mean, you did run around the house. You jumped in the pool. But, like, was there an official, like, did your parents help you celebrate? How did you celebrate? Or did you celebrate yet? Uh, I'm... I mean, you know, it's, it's life is a constant celebration. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just having fun and, 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 you know, going out when I want to spending time with my friends, yeah. I'm about to go back to the Bay for my mom's birthday this weekend. So awesome. uh, I'll get to celebrate with the family a little bit too. Good stuff. So with mood, do you remember the session? Do you remember when you recorded it? Oh yeah. Did you feel like you had something special uh, with Ian? Like when you left the session, did you feel like, I think this is going to be it. Or was it just another song? Um, I think because of the the comfortability that like me, Ian, Omer, KBZ, Ryan, we we're all friends. We're all comfortable with each other. Nobody was like, we just made the craziest song ever. But like, <laughs> we knew it was some, we knew this was some hot shit. Right. But, right. But we're like, all right, we're just friends making music, you know, and that's right. the mentality that we always operate on. So to see, you know, friends making music work at the highest level having the number one song in the world the number one song in america that that's that's a, a statement in itself like yeah. you don't need to 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 work with the biggest producers in the world you don't need to have 100 writers on a song you just got to do what you love with with talented people that you feel comfortable with and let that shit flourish absolutely and you look at someone like billy eilish who made her album with her brother in her bedroom you know yeah. and it's a massive star and then here you are just working with with people who you know who are your friends and there you go, you have this massive hit. Before I came to LA, I was like, like, what 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 is all these motherfuckers talking about vibes? Like, what are these vibes everyone's talking about? But after like being here and making music and creating here, like it, it they're kind of onto something. Like yeah. it's the people you surround yourself with and, and the the comfort level you have with those people, the more comfortable you are, the better you can create. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I imagine that there is a crazy amount of pressure on you right now. I mean, you have the biggest song in America and probably the world. Are you worried at all about a follow-up or it's just one of those things, whatever happens, happens? Um, We already got the follow-up, to be <laughs> honest with you. Uh, and I think that one's going to go number one too. <laughs> I love the, I can't wait to hear it. I love the confidence. I mean, can you give it an idea of when that follow-up is coming? <laughs> uh, I think before the end of the year, I'll tell okay. you that. We're going to have a dope video. It, it's, a, it's an incredible song. And I just, I, I've been making so much good music during this quarantine period that yeah. I got a, I got a backlog of, <laughs> of, of stuff to drop. So that whole rollout process is going to be fun. And, and that really helped take away the pressure. You know, it's not like being uh, in, in high school and, and having to write a five page essay right. before, before the night before the test. It's like, I already wrote the, all my homework for the whole year ahead of us. Right. So, so we're good and I can just focus on, you know, what's the next crazy idea and concept that we're going to go for. Has the industry embraced you? Like have other rappers embraced you? I mean, you were picked as one of the double uh, XL freshmen um, of 2020. Um, you know, obviously you're a legit artist. It's not just a streaming or TikTok thing. Have other rappers reached out and said, you know, or even just celebrities and other artists reached out to you? Yeah, people have reached out, but you know, I, I, I didn't come into this game to, to, to hang out with celebrities and to go to exclusive parties and stuff like that. Like, trust me, I enjoy that. That's fun for right. me. But, right. but everything that I've done up to this point that's allowed me to achieve this greatness has been working with people that I, I know, that I love, that I care about. So I'm not really in a, in a rush to, to fix what's not broken. Exactly. Um, but people have definitely reached out. And, and one of those artists that I'm a fan of, 
of course, that's a that's a huge like. I feel honored that they that they that they rock on my stuff, and there's sure. definitely like like uh, Trippy Red, you know, yeah. Sean Kingston, Lil Nas X, um, like those are people I admire that I be yeah. build relationships with um, more than just music. Like we actually fuck with each other, and that and I think when if you have that foundation then that gives you the ability to make music because if you and me don't like each other but our voices sound good together the song isn't going to sound good right there has to be chemistry there yeah you mentioned little nas x and i was thinking you have a very similar career trajectory to him in that here's this song that was amazing it went viral um and then it became a massive hit have you talked to him it seems as though you've talked to him about you know managing that success i mean you guys are similar in age I mean, same, he's your label mate, you know? So at any yeah. point you can be like, listen, I want a song with Lil Nas X and they're going to make it happen. But has he talked to you about your success and given you advice on how to deal with all this? Yeah, I mean, I think he was one of the, one of the people like that probably understands the closest to, to what my experience has been. And we think the same way, you know, we blew our own music up yeah. uh, ourselves, you know, and we, we had a, a similar experience as you said, but He's, he's like a, a person I genuinely consider a friend and one of the few people that I could talk to about certain things of being an artist and being a sure. creative or dealing with the, the whole fame beast yeah. that that is and, yeah. and he gets it. So yeah, I think having those people that, that understand what you're going through is crucial to, to not feeling like sad and alone all the time, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, no. And have you heard any of his new music? I know that he has new music coming out next month. You guys are friends. Uh, he'll kill me if I talk about his music. So <laughs> I will not do that. I just thought I'd ask. It, it doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I, you mentioned um, working really hard during this quarantine and, and putting together this body of work, this album. Um, is there something that you learned about yourself during quarantine that it's like, you know what, this is a quality that I'm definitely going to take with me, you know, throughout the rest of the year, throughout the rest of my life. Was there something you learned about yourself? I think, you know, having that ability to focus and, and not let your, you know, like have work, having the ability to not let your external circumstances fuck up what you got going on inside, you know, because, I know what I want. I know where I'm, what I, what I'm capable of. I know what I can do. And, and I can't let nothing else yeah. distract me off of my path, you know? Right. Right. And, and I think a big thing that I've learned through this quarantine is to trust in myself and, and to, to not question myself and, and, you know, just go off, off the gut, off the instinct. Don't overthink too much. Yeah. You, you see, you don't seem like you're 19 in the sense that like, that was a very insightful answer. Where is this, like, the humility? Where, where does that come from? Do you, is it your parents? Is it how you grew up? Where does that, that sense of being humble come from? Um, I never, where I'm from, this is not typical. No, okay. I'm the first platinum artist, uh, first platinum rapper from San Francisco. First number one from San Francisco. First double yeah. XL from San Francisco. Like, all these things are, are blessings. And I don't feel entitled to any of them necessarily, you know? My parents raised me really well. Paperboy gave me so much wisdom, you know? Like, I surround myself with, with, with like-minded people. And I've seen, bro, like, like you, I'm sure we've all talked to somebody that, that had that sense of entitlement and arrogance. And you're like, yeah, yeah I don't really want to see this person win. They're kind of a dick, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> and and I never want to be that person, you know? I, I want to be the guy that that is thanking the people that, that helped me get to this position and puts my friends in the position to succeed themselves. Yeah. And I think when, when you operate off that mindset of, you know, just trying to, to add value instead of take value or show value, you know, people want to see you win. And when people want to see you win, they help you win. And that's why I think I've been able to uh, experience and receive all these blessings such, such early age. You have a great energy about you. And, and I think, yes, that for sure is why people are willing to help you and, and they rock with you the way that they do. Um, so El Dorado, still the name of the album, right? Yes. And still coming out sometime next year. Yes. Okay. So And so we're going to get the follow-up to Mood before the end of the year, before the ball drops. 100%. Yeah, 100% before the ball drops. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's been a, like a crazy experience over the yeah. past three, four months just watching mood take off and develop. But I'm like, yo, y'all have no idea how much more <laughs> songs I got to show y'all. So I really just can't wait to, to keep putting out music and, and see how the people respond to it. 
It's very exciting. I look forward to hopefully meeting you in person. I mean, this COVID thing has messed up, you know, in terms of promo and, you know, being able to see people and perform and stuff like that. So I can't wait for that album to come out. I'm excited to hear the follow up to Mood and I wish you a lot of luck, 24K. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you for talking. Have a good one. You too.